welcome back to my channel and as promised I'm going to do a little bit more introduction to the raw vegan kitchen and what it really looks like getting into it. So uh, since many of you, thank you very much, are starting to purchase my book, I really like to take this time to explain and please do not worry if you send questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. So I talked in my in one of my last videos about making noodles and this is number one it's the mindset that you will have to change a little bit in the raw vegan kitchen. Um, often it, it's a little bit strange when we talk about noodles because uh, immediately we think of rice noodles or wheat noodles or pasta and in the raw vegan kitchen it just comes in form of vegetables and the same is for sushi even the sushi rice is not made of um, rice often we are using a vegetable too now i picked today a recipe on page 209 and it is written cucumber avocado rolls but if you look at the picture, funnily enough, that photograph has been a mixture of cucumber avocado rolls, but also cucumber um, cheese rolls. And this is a really good start for me to get in. So, as you maybe have uh, watched in my previous videos the making of the raw vegan feta cheese if not you can find it in my playlist you know that the raw vegan feta cheese which is also in my book here on page number 189 this cheese is relatively quickly made and I also added a video of how you can peel your almonds so when you purchase almonds they usually come in this form so I'm explaining in that video how to quickly peel them now once you have peeled them and once you have made your cheese you would have put the cheese into a uh, strainer and left it for one day in your refrigerator or if you were really hungry like me you already started eating and if you decided to leave it in your refrigerator you will find excess water so that excess water is what uh, has been tropic down within 24 hours now if you are not very used to a mandolin slicer which are extremely sharp and extremely dangerous you might want to start off practicing using a spiralizer so a spiralizer still can be a little bit dangerous but it is safer than the mandolin slicer because often we don't want to use the protective gear okay but I'm going to show you a little bit of each. Now, I use zucchini just because these are left over. So I would cut off both ends and I usually leave the peel on. Now, when you begin using a mandolin slicer, I highly recommend you to maybe put it on a surface or maybe put it half inside but if you are slicing long pieces it is better to either get the upgraded version that comes with the bassin so your goods fall directly into or you begin to slice using the protective gear and then you will quickly see the first two slices or maybe even the first three slices are very very thin and obviously you cannot roll very well now as we get more deeper into the um, zucchini we have 
more equal slices and especially for my raw vegan pasta this is a very useful skill so i will point out the raw vegan pasta it calls the um, masterpiece so i'm calling it the masterpiece because you do need to make this recipe in three different steps and so number one and often it seems like a big milestone to achieve is to learn to use a mandolin slicer number two is to make the tomato sauce and the cheese that comes with the um, recipe okay i haven't been very much well prepared today i'm just offered making these videos here here we go so this is the masterpiece and it truly looks like a lasagna you see this it's called masterpiece lasagna it's on page 105 and you have to make the pasta which is this you have to make um, the tomato sauce and you have to make the raw vegan cheese and then when it is ready it looks like so and here's the preparation so the best is to really also look at the photographs and there is a similar recipe where we also are using the mandolin slicer but we're going a step further we are dehydrating but i usually reserve dehydrated uh, things for bigger activities or for events or when i'm traveling and that recipe is on page 163 it is the salsa inspired by my friend katrina and uh, i'm just gonna quickly demonstrate what i would do here so once I finished until the last bit you can take this aside and do not worry we're gonna use the leftovers so we're gonna chop everything later into small pieces and actually put it into the filling so now a number uh, a, a different step would be now that our goods are still very crisp and very fresh so i would take just a little bit of olive oil and i'm deciding either i'm putting everything on a dehydrator mesh just maybe for 30 minutes i put everything inside or i will begin to roll up and now you can call it raw vegan sushi and if we do not use the nori like i'm going to do here you can make cannelloni so i make them often but they will also be dehydrated so that is another thing we personally have to find out how do i like zucchinis so there are a lot of people that shy away right away when they hear raw zucchini it's like no way and i'm a little bit like this so therefore what i usually do so I'm going to show you two examples. So one would be just putting my cheese on it with a nori. So it would be a kind of sushi. Or for the second one, and I just use a little bit of oil to make it a little bit softer. This would be for the cannelloni. I'm putting it in here. And... In both ways, I will roll my goods. So now just see, it's a very simple procedure. So here is your piece of sushi ready, ready to eat. Now, if you have friends, like in a sushi asan, in a sushi store, you would serve them right away. So the fresh piece will be given to the customer. When I make, when I'm going for cannelloni, and I will make a proper video in the future about this, you would take your peas and you would put them into an oiled dish. So you just, just imagine you. 
Just imagine your dehydrator as an oven with an oven paper. So you can just put a little bit of oil here and then you would begin to place the cannelloni. So why don't I make half so you can watch me a little bit. So from one zucchini you can go both ways. So you can do sushis or cannelloni. So I'll make, I'll make both for you. Um, so the coming videos are all about where to start, how to get into the raw vegan kitchen. Um, and you know, sometimes it's a good idea to really pick something that is a challenge or pick something where we think, uh, nah, it's difficult, I don't want to do it. Because especially maybe when you have a little bit time on your hand and you want to space out and maybe also, you know, just be with yourself without music, without distraction. Um, then choose a recipe that is a little bit more challenging. So, and now we're going to show you another sushi. So, and again, when we are making sushi, um, sushis served in Japan also come in different forms. And you might as well decide to fill a little bit more things inside. And also like in my picture to um, decorate your pieces. So this is this is where I am an inspiration for you and you don't have to exactly do what I tell you. It's just really tipping into different possibilities. So this is really going to be my dinner for tonight because I like the zucchinis being a little bit soaked. So here you see this. And I have a tomato ketchup ready. So I will put half half today. I'm right now really the only person in in the house that eats the raw vegan dishes. My boys bailed out on me. Which is fine. Sometimes they try. But this is another thing. If you decide to embark in a raw journey or in a vegan journey, don't hustle the other people with it, okay? Just just do your thing. Try out stuff. Try out uh, flavors. And here again, let's come back to the mindset. Sometimes when we look at a vegetable, be like, oh, okay, cucumber. How many cucumbers can I eat? But honestly, if you change the shape of that cucumber, if you slice it or spiralize it, or maybe you use a crater, yeah, immediately that simple piece of vegetable becomes something completely else. Okay, now I'm gonna show you something else. Okay, put this aside. I'm like an artist in the kitchen all the time. It's quite messy, even though I did professional um, cooking classes and my my chef, my the chef cook always used to tell me how clean I'm working. Now in my own four walls, I like to be messy and just everything is all over the floor. Now, if all this is maybe not yet for you, why don't you take that container and you begin with the thick side and you learn how to make these pastas as I showed also in the other video. And just maybe take a little bit, don't waste the entire thing, maybe take half. And then, ideally to make that pasta softer, you can just add a pinch of salt. This, this pinch of salt will help you to make the water um, trip down and help the pasta to become soft. But if you like me, you like it semi al dente, you would just take some of your cheese. Okay, for me, this is the leftover cheese. And then 
settle the cheese into your noodles and do not put them in the refrigerator, just set them on a kitchen counter for a few hours. So this is your dinner. Now I know there have been lots of talks, the raw vegan kitchen is so complicated, the raw vegan kitchen needs a lot of soaking, the raw vegan kitchen needs um, dehydration. Yes, that's all correct. This is why it's called raw um, kitchen, but uh, to be very honest, it will take you, so when you purchase my book, it will take you a great deal of time to really get your head around it. What am I doing here? What's the timing? Um, where to begin? How long can I keep my, my things? So rule of thumb for me and in general, everything you make that is uncooked or cooked, I would give plus minus three days. Now, when it comes to dehydrated goods or when it comes to fermented goods, of course, it's a quite a long time and you don't need to worry about it. Now, another good idea is that if you, if you start off making cheeses and you will find a lot of recipes in here, begin with an easy one. So you can proceed to page, I'm sorry, I here, so tomato cheese. So tomato cheese on page 101 looks very simple, but this cheese has one advantage. And this cheese can be made as a bread spread. And it says here, can be eaten raw as a bread spread, or you can Put it, as I explained before, into your drainer and put it in the refrigerator and then dehydrate it. But most of all, it says here, in the refrigerator, that bread spread lasts up to two weeks. So back in the day, I think uh, in 1945 or 1946, they're established, I think they were Danish, Danish or Dutch, maybe Dutch, a, a company that did uh, Tardex. And if you about 40 or 50 years old, you might be remembering, they were amazing. Everybody loved Tardex. And what is Tardex or what used to be Tardex? Tardex used to be plant-based bread spreads so it's nothing new this kind to prepare food is ultra ancient and has been cultivated actively over the past hundred years but for some reason i think after the second world war people were just very <laughs> tired of preparing food or even didn't have food to prepare so this whole sort of vanished for a couple of generations and only really um, people that were into it or maybe young pioneers cultivated. Now, because of social media, it's a massive hype, which has to be relearned again. Okay, last little tip. Probably you heard or you read in my book about Nutritional East. I don't have the um packaging here now but nutritional yeast smells like cheese now if you don't like cheese you will not like that smell look it comes in a powdered form looks like this looks like looks basically to me very synthetic and this is also the way i treat it i do not overdo it and nutritional yeast i think is still in great research so if you really start digging into it you might find negative statements so please as with everything just start small integrate this food have your food diary see how how your skin is changing see what your digestive system does and having said this remember raw food 
is very hard to digest. So you don't want to start off in the morning with a crazy big juice and then have a massive big salad and then eat another um, almost completely raw item because not only you will constantly feel bloated but also you might be running to the toilet all the time. So I think in slow integration of raw dishes is much wiser than completely going off cooked foods and if you do want to do this just take it easy yeah just go in small steps okay and as a reminder my book in english be afraid nihongo des and of deutsch thank you so much for watching